so this is the next question here 3c find the volume charge density at points indicated if we have here two sub questions the value of d is, they have mentioned it as 4rz sin 5 a rho vector plus 2rz cos 5 a phi vector plus 2r square sin 5 a z vector coulombs per meter square at the point mentioned p is equal to 1 comma pi by 2 comma 2 okay so here we can see that the rho, the coefficients are rho 5 and z so this is in cylindrical coordinate system the values of rho phi and z okay so here they mentioned it as pi by 2 we can even write it pi by 2 or 90 degree it is one and the same okay so we have the relation of uh, divergence uh, that is del dot d is equal to rho v okay from this we can find the volume charge density or the divergence it is one and the same so we can expand del dot d in cylindrical coordinate system okay so del dot d is equal to in cylindrical coordinate system this is the formula 1 by rho dou by dou rho of rho d rho plus 1 by rho dou by dou phi of d phi plus 1 uh, plus dou by dou z of dz okay so 1 by rho dou by dou rho of rho into d rho in the question that i mentioned 4 rz sin phi substitute that 4 rho z sin phi okay plus 1 by rho dou by dou phi of 2 rho z cos phi plus dou by dou z of 2 rho square sin phi okay so here you can see that we don't have any z term here so we can directly cancel this term so 1 by rho dou by dou rho of this so multiply this rho to this term that is 4 rho square z sin phi plus 1 by rho dou by dou phi of 2 rho z cos phi so if we take the derivative of dou by dou rho with respect to this term that is 4 rho uh, 4 in, uh, so derivative of rho square okay so that is a 2 rho leaving all the terms constant that is 4 z sin phi so 2 rho we have 4 into 2 that is 8 8 rho z sin phi okay so if we can cancel this rho rho term here so we are left with only 8 z sin phi minus uh, dou by dou phi with respect to phi here this term that is derivative of cos phi is minus sin phi so it is minus 2 rho z sin phi again we can cancel this rho so we are left with 8 z sin phi minus 2 z sin phi that is equal to rho v is equal to 6 z sin phi okay coulombs per meter cube now we need to be substituting the value of rho v at 1 comma pi by 2 comma 2 that is in place of z we have 2 so substitute that 6 into 2 sin of phi that is pi by 2 okay sin pi by 2 means sin 90 degree sin 90 degree is equal to 1 so 6 2s are 12 into sin 90 is 1 so our final value of uh, volume charge density rho v is equal to 12 coulombs per meter cube okay so this was for the sub first sub question okay you can note it down okay so now let's see the second sub question so this is the second sub question here they have given the value of d as sin theta cos 5 ar vector plus cos theta sin 5 a theta vector minus sin theta a phi vector coulombs per meter square at the point mentioned p is equal to 2 comma pi by 3 comma pi by 6 so here when we observe the question we can say that it is in spherical coordinate system so these are the values of r theta and phi okay so again the relationship between uh, surface charge density and divergence we have that uh, del dot d is equal to rho v so since the, they have mentioned it in spherical coordinates so that's why I expand this del dot d in spherical coordinate system so this is the expansion of that that is 1 by r square dou by dou r of r square dr plus 1 by r sin theta dou by dou theta of d theta into sin theta plus 1 by r sin theta dou by dou phi of d phi okay one by one substitute the values of dr d theta and d phi that is 1 by r square dou by dou r of r square into sin theta cos phi and in place of d theta write it as cos theta sin phi and in place of d phi write it as minus sin phi okay then multiply this term that is r square sin theta cos phi again if we uh, partially differentiate with respect to r so differentiation of r square is 2r so let's say we can cancel one r and r in this from this term here okay so we are left with only r in the denominator here so here so here in this case 1 by r sin theta dou by dou theta of here we have cos theta sin theta okay so in order to differentiate this term we need to be writing it in the form of 2 sin theta cos theta so that's why the uh, multiply and uh, divide the numerator and denominator by 2 so that we are getting in the numerator 2 sin theta cos theta that is replaced by sin 2 theta and the differentiation of d by d theta with respect to sin 2 theta that is cos 2 theta 
differentiation of sin 2 theta is 2 cos 2 theta okay so we are having a 2 cos 2 theta so that's why and also in the denominator side we are having one 2 here so that's we can cancel this 2 and 2 here so we are left with only sin theta sorry sin 5 into cos 2 theta divided by r sin theta minus uh, again the differentiation of dou by dou phi with respect to phi is uh, minus sin phi its differentiation is minus cos phi divided by r sin theta as it is okay so like this way we are getting the value of del dot d here okay then uh, since del dot d is equal to rho v so rho v at the points mentioned 2 comma pi by 3 comma pi by 6 that is 2 sin theta so time sin theta means in place of theta we have pi by 3 or we can write it as 60 degree pi by 6 we can write it as 30 degree okay so sin 60 cos 5 means cos 30 divided by 2 since the value of r is 2 so 2 2 will be getting cancelled here so plus sin 30 divided by 2 sin 60 degree into cos 1 into 20 degree minus cos 30 degree by 2 sin 60 degree okay then here sin 60 is root 3 by 2 cos 30 is again root 3 by 2 plus sin 30 is 1 by 2 and 2 sin 60 degree so 2 into sin 60 is root 3 by 2 okay then minus again cos 120 degree is minus 1 by 2 minus cos 30 is root 3 by 2 and divided by 2 sin 60 degree that is 2 times root 3 by 2 again so root 3 by 2 root 3 by 2 we can cancel we are left with only 1 by 2 here okay so here the answer is root 3 into root 3 that is root 3 the whole square that is equal to 3 2 2s are 4 so 3 by 4 minus so since we are left with here 2 root 3 here and here we have minus 1 by 2 that we can write it as minus 0.5 divided by 2 root 3 minus 1 by 2 here again so minus 0.5 so 3 by 4 we can write it as 0.75 minus if we simplify this we are getting the answer as 0 0.072 okay minus 0 0.5 and if we simplify this uh, this is the answer of uh, volume charge density which we are getting that is 0.178 coulombs per meter cube okay so this was the simple solution for this problem here so you can note it down so yeah that's all so the next concept here which we are trying to cover is continuity of current okay continuity equation okay so now let's see what is this continuity of current so the principle of conservation charge states that the charges can neither be created nor destroyed this is the law of conservation of charge which you need to be you might be heard in the lower classes as well that is the charges can neither be created nor destroyed okay so this is not the concept the real concept is uh, let's see what is that consider a region bounded by a closed surface and the current through the closed surface is given by uh, i is equal to surface integral of j dot delta s which i have already proved it in the previous uh, derivation so now the outward flow of positive charges must be balanced by decrease of positive charges okay may be increased of uh, negative charges that is the outward flow of positive charges in a particular path must be balanced by the decrease of positive charges so whenever the charges are getting decreased the the whenever the charges are getting decreased in the inside path so when when it get decreased the the uh, charges here moves outward that is the outward flow of positive charges should not affect the inward flow of the positive charges so it should have a balance between them okay so that's why let the charge inside the closed surface be given as qi here so then the from the principle of conservation of charge we know that energy can either be created or destroyed that is i is equal to surface integral of j dot ds is equal to the change in the uh, rate of change of charge with respect to time here the charge which we are given it is uh, qi okay so that's why this negative sign indicates the outward flow of current okay so that's why we have written this uh, negative sign here so this indicates the outward flow of current so now from divergence theorem we know that this is uh, one relation which we have proved in the divergence theorem part that is surface integral of j dot ds is equal to volume integral of del dot j dv okay but in place of d here we have written it j okay since we uh, don't need the component d here flux density is not required in this case we need the current density here so in place of uh, flux density electric flux density we have uh, replaced it by current density in both the sides okay so now what we can say del dot uh, j uh, volume integral of del dot j dv is equal to uh, minus uh, d, dqi by dt that is minus d by dt of q is uh, represented as q in general it is volume integral of 
rho v dv right since we have proved it in the first module as well so we need to replace this charge by volume integral of uh, rho v dv so that's why what we will be getting uh, volume integral of del dot j dv is equal to minus volume integral of this d by dt when we take inside the integral from the limits uh, rule of differentiation what we will be getting when we go when the differentiation part goes inside the integral it would be dou by dou t so that's why minus integration of vo uh, volume integral of dou by dou t rho v dv okay so now this in from both sides we can cancel it uh, cancel out this volume integral also we can cancel out this dv okay so the remaining part is so now what is remaining here after cancellation that is del dot j is equal to minus dou by dou t of rho v okay so this is the relation between current density that is a uh, current uh, density and volume charge density so this is the relationship and this rela relationship uh, derives our continuity equation here in point form okay so this equation is called as continuity equation which is given in point form also the relationship the general relationship between current cha charge density and volume charge density okay please note it down hello everyone so welcome to this new session so in the last classes we have uh, solved few problems related to the work done okay using the line integrals okay so now let's uh, see in brief the concept called as line integral okay uh, using this line integral how we can form the work done okay along the uh, components of delta l okay so first let's consider a, a straight line okay which has an initial position as well as the final position so i have named this initial position as point b and the final position as point a okay and along that we have uh, drawn three parallel parallel lines which is uh, giving out the electric field okay which uh, i have named it as el1 that is uh, electric field due to line 1 line 2 and line 3 and also we have uh, named few of the components that is delta 1 delta 2 and delta 3 okay yeah so now let's see what expression we might get using these line integrals so the integral expression for the work done in moving a point charge q from one position to another from b to a is called a line integral so this is the basic definition of line integral here and here the work done is given as minus q integral of initial position to final position el vector dot dl vector where this el represents the component of this electric field along the line dl okay along the change in the position of the line okay so now let e be the uniform electric field okay okay so now let the path from initial to final position be divided into three segments as i have told you delta l1 delta l2 and delta l3 and also the components of e along each segment is denoted as el1 el2 and el3 respectively so the work done in moving a charge from B to A is approximately given as so this is the way the work done is given here the formula you can see W is equal to minus Q into EL1 delta L1 plus EL2 delta L2 plus EL3 delta L3 since we have divided it into three segments that is delta L1 delta L2 and delta L3 so that's why we are getting EL1 delta L1 plus EL2 delta L2 plus EL3 delta L3 so now using the vector that is w is equal to minus q into e1 dot delta n1 that is we are using some uh, dot product here we are replacing el1 by e1 okay and we are doing this multiplication using dot product so that's why it would be e1 delta l1 plus e2 delta l2 plus e3 delta l3 okay since here uh, the electric field is the uniform electric field here which we are producing so that's why we can say that e1 e2 e3 and e all of them are equal okay so when all of these three becomes equal so generally we can take a uh, this equation would be e delta l1 plus e dot delta l2 plus e dot delta l3 right when all of them are equal to e then what we can take say is we can take e outside here i have taken e outside dot delta l1 plus delta l2 plus delta l3 okay that is minus q into e vector dot delta l from b to a that is from initial position to final position we are having three components right 
when we move from initial position to final position the components produced are delta l1 delta l2 delta l3 so the summation of these three will give you delta l from b to a okay yeah so that's why i have written here delta l from b to a so finally we can say that the work done expression is minus q e uh, e vector dot integral of uh, uh, initial position to final position a into uh, the uh, dl vector okay where this delta l b to a is replaced by dl vector so this is the expression you need to remember okay for the line integral a work done in a particular path where uh, the electric field is produced uh, serially okay there will there will be multiple electric field produced in a single path using that we are, we can find the work done so this is the formula for that okay so let's solve one problem to be uh, clear with the concept okay